Welcome back. We're going to talk about exponential functions today. So what exactly is an exponential function? It's nonlinear. And the difference is it will change by equal factors over equal intervals. The equation for an exponential function is y is equal to a b to the x power. Now, a could not equal 0 because then I would just have 0 on the right side of this equation. b has to be greater than 0, so we're only looking at positive values. And b cannot equal 1. Can anybody explain why b cannot equal 1? That's right. If b was 1, 1 raised to any power is always going to be 1. So that makes no sense, sense as well. Now let's try and identify functions. Identify them whether they are linear or whether they are exponential. If I'm looking at a graph, it's usually pretty obvious whether I have a straight line or an exponential curve. But what happens if I have a table of values? Let's go ahead and look at the intervals and see what the change is. So for the first example, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, what am I doing every time? We're adding 1 every time. So our change in x is up by 1s. Now how about 8 to 4 or 4 to 2 and 2 to 1? Well, the following number is half of the previous number. So I would be multiplying each in each of those intervals by 1 half. This is exponential. And it is exponential because y is being multiplied by 1 half. So there is a factor that is multiplying. And so the definition of an exponential function is that the change are equal factors over equal intervals. Now let's go ahead and look at the second table of values. My x's are changing because they are going up by 4 every time. I'm adding 4. What's happening to the y? The y is going down by 1. So I'm subtracting 1 from each interval. Well, my change in y over my change in x, which is my slope, is going to be negative 1 over 4 equal to negative 1 over 4 equal to negative 1 over 4. So there is a constant rate of change, which means this is linear. Now let's go ahead and evaluate an exponential function. We're going to need how to, do, to know how to do this so we can graph exponential functions. So let's go ahead and first let's substitute in negative 2. So y is equal to 2 times 9 raised to the negative second power. So what does a negative exponent actually mean? It means the reciprocal. So I would have y equals 2 times 1 ninth all raised to the second power. So that would be y equals 2 times 1 squared over 9 squared. y is equal to 2 times the quantity of 1 over 81. And so y is equal to 2 over 81. Let's go ahead now and let's substitute in the 0 for x. Well, do you remember what any number raised to the 0 power is? It is 1. So y is equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and raise our 9 to the 1 half power. Now what does a rational exponent mean? It means the root 
and in this case, the square root of 9. We know the square root of 9 is 3, so 2 times 3 is equal to 6. And if you notice, these would all be ordered pairs, which means I could go ahead and I could graph this exponential function. Speaking about graphing, let's now go ahead and graph an exponential function. But we're going to graph this when b is greater than 0 and less than 1. So b is going to be a fraction. We're going to graph 3 times the quantity of 1 half raised to the x power equals y. And, that, and now x is a member of the set negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, which is just a fancy way of saying x is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. That is called set notation. Let's go ahead and substitute in negative 2. So I have 3 times 1 half to the negative second. A negative exponent means reciprocal. So I have 3 times 2 over 1 to the second power, 3 times 4, which is 12. My ordered pair is negative 2, 12. Negative 1, 3 times 1 half to the negative first power, 3 times 2 over 1 to the first power, which would be 3 times 2, or 6. My next ordered pair is 1, 6. Now we're going to substitute in 0. 3 times 1 half to the 0 power. Any number raised to the 0 power is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. My ordered pair is 0, 3. Let's go ahead and substitute in 1. 3 times 1 half to the first power would be just 3 times 1 half, which would be 3 halves. So my ordered pair is 1, 3 halves. And the last value for our domain, our x that we're going to substitute in is a 2. So we have 3 times uh, 1 half raised to the second power, which would be 3 times 1 over 4, or 3 fourths. So the ordered pair is 2, 3 fourths. And now we can take those ordered pairs and put them on a coordinate plane. Okay, let's go ahead and plot these points. So our first ordered pair is negative 2, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so my first point goes right there. Negative 1, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice we label our points. 0, 3, 1, 3 halves. And 3 halves would be 1 and a half. So 1 and 3 halves. And 2 and... 3 fourths. Notice that does, that does not make a straight line. So we are going to co connect these points in a smooth curve. Now when we get down here, I want you to keep curving so that curve looks like this. And we're going to label our graph with the function rule which is y is equal to 3 times 1 half to the x power. Notice that this curve keeps curving. My question to you is, do you think that graph is ever going to touch that x-axis? In other words, is y ever going to be 0. 
Well, if we look at what we're multiplying, we're multiplying three times a half. And when I have a negative exponent, this graph keeps going up because my fraction gets flipped. When I have a positive x, the graph, my fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Is that fraction ever going to be zero? And the answer is no. So when you draw that graph, be very careful that your curve is not crossing the x-axis. Now, part B asked, talk about the domain and talk about the range. Now, the domain, if you remember, is our x values. So let's see, are there any restrictions on our x's? Our x's can get as small as we want them to be in the negative and as large as we want them to be in the positive. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. Now, what about the range? The range is our y values. Well, it looks like they're going to keep, this curve is going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and up the more negative my x is. But what about my, my uh, positive values of x? We just discussed that it is never going to cross that x-axis. Y is never could, going to be 0. So I could say y has to be greater than 0, or I can say, because 0 is neither negative nor positive, so I can say all positive real numbers. So in this first half of the lesson, we learned how to identify a function, whether it's linear or exponential, how to evaluate an exponential function, and how to graph an exponential function and describe the domain and range. In the next part, we're going to talk about comparing the exponential functions and how to write an equation given a table or a graph of an exponential function.